Hello friends, Lee Brown here and welcome back to My Kitchen, My Rules. I'm obviously in my fanciest attire today because it's another summer day and another day spent out in the garden gathering in the goods. And I'm so grateful for that because we love summer garden. However, you're like me, you get tired of those summer goodies too. Now you know, that very first squash that comes in is the best. And then you get the first tomato and you just celebrate. And then by about the 47th one, you're thinking, what in the name of all that's holy am I gonna do with all this squash and all these tomatoes? And friends, I have the magic secret for you today. And this recipe, this recipe comes to you courtesy of my cousin Ann. And she put this recipe in our family cookbook one time and I tried it and we have now made it so many times that it's a recipe you can make by heart too. So this is called garden pie. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm browning a pound of ground beef. And yes, I do buy this over at the farmer's market locally sourced, which does cost a little bit more. But I don't know about y'all, there's so many things happening in the world. I need to keep some of the chemicals out of my diet and you can just say amen to that if you want. But because ground beef is very dear, I do like to buy it and parcel it out in the freezer. And so we've also added some Worcestershire sauce to our ground beef while we're cooking it. And we've added a little bit of kosher salt and we're gonna add a little bit more of that here in a little bit, but actually we put a little bit more Worcestershire in the ground beef as it heats up. That's on a medium heat. So while that's browning, let's do the garden part of our pie. Okay, so while our ground beef is going, we need to get our onion chopped up right quick because that can go in there. And by the way, today I'm actually not using my fancy new Cutco knife. I'm using my knife that was made by my friend Eric Kistner in Tennessee. And I think he sells them, but I don't know how he made it so wonderfully that my children and I like to use it the best. So you should look up Eric Kistner for all your real estate needs in uh, Bristol and Johnson City in the, what's that, the Tri area? I don't know, Northeast Tennessee. And we're gonna dice one onion. And so what you're gonna have to have on hand while you're planning ahead, and some of y'all I understand don't even watch my channel to cook. You're watching it to, to look. And I, I appreciate the voyeurs of the world and that you don't want to cook. But you know what, friends, this is so easy. I mean, you'll look like a daggum genius. So you should totally just suck it up and make something for once in your life. Make something, plus it's cheap and it's easy. Oh, so easy. And by the way, even if you don't have a garden, you've probably got family members that do, and they would be just the most grateful ever if you would take some of these squash and these zucchinis and tomatoes off of their hands. They don't give up the first ones, but by the time we've all had enough fried squash and baked squash and roasted squash and squash casserole that we can't eat anymore. Now, I will say I don't run out of space in my belly for tomato sandwiches. I just can't get tired of a tomato sandwich because those hot house tomatoes from the grocery store taste pretty much like cardboard, although I imagine cardboard does taste better than a grocery store tomato but you know you got to do what you got to do in the winter time so just go ahead and make this all right you don't even have to make the crust i want to show you all the secret on the and the crust and i think there must be a satan in the house because my lights are hopping up and down so please don't leave nasty comments about the lighting in lee's studio because i do believe my daughter is probably running her hair dryer in her room which could explain why the lights are hopping up and down otherwise it is satan and uh, Satan would definitely want you to eat out and he would not want you to make something wonderful at home for your family where you can control the ingredients. This is so weird. So I'm just gonna ignore it because that's totally my talent in life is ignoring odd things. So now we've got our tomato cut up here and we are just gonna transfer that directly over to the frying pan where our ground beef is just browning and the talking to us over there. And those of y'all that are good listeners have heard it in the background already. So if you're wondering why I have two cutting boards here, I've got a transfer cutting board so I can put all my vegetables on the same one and maybe reduce the amount that I have to be rinsing everything. All right, dump that in here. Now you know the secret on cooking your onions by now if you've been watching my channel, you are waiting for them to go translucent. 
so since the ground beef was about halfway, it's the perfect time to put in our onions. The next thing we're gonna chop up is, we will chop our green pepper next. And these, by the way, I did grow in my garden this year. I'm super proud of my, my green peppers. Did I say green onions? I meant green peppers. Don't listen to me sometimes. But I grew the California Wonders. And I guess that's proof that, hey, California, y'all can get some right. Woo! I do like these bell peppers. They are a non monkey with clone. These are heirlooms. And I like heirlooms when I'm doing my vegetables because the more I read up on all of the different breeds y'all it makes me a little nervous I'm not even gonna lie to you and I think that's why Satan is in the light today and making it hop around so let's see I will tell you the first time you make garden pie your family is gonna come out of their skin they're gonna be so excited and you will eat the whole entire pan and then by the fifth time you make it because you're gonna find out how easy this is and what a genius it appears you are when you've made it. Uh, they're still gonna eat it all the way to almost the last bite. I have discovered that at this point we are not eating the whole pie. We leave one little tiny slice and that's just fine because I will eat the last slice myself. That mixed in there. So now we're gonna chop up our squash and this is the one that's going to take you just a little bit minute longer in the pan so we're going to get it in there you can leave it in the giant circles if you want to or if you so choose you can take those big rounds and cut them down into quarters which is what i personally do just so they will cook a wee tiny bit faster and that is that little bit there, put it on the transfer board. All right. And smell that ground beef with onions. You probably start a restaurant just serving garden pie and things like banana pudding. And I would make a fortune and I could leave real estate behind, but then again, I would miss real estate. I would miss my delightful little clients, like my little first time buyer went under contract this week building her first house. Sweet, sweet girl getting her PhD. And we were talking about the balancing of the lot and how she's gonna keep it forever and start her real estate empire. And she's probably gonna meet some nice man now that she's bought herself a house, because that's how it works. All right, let's toss all of that in. Now, now we're gonna cook this down until our meat is all the way cooked, which means no pink. And when our onions are translucent, the bell peppers can kind of cook whatever you're happy with them, honestly. And then you want the squash to soften up a little bit because I don't like it to be super duper crunchy. And the longer you cook the squash, the softer it will be. I'm right now just breaking up my ground beef. And then we're gonna let this sit cook for just a minute and while that's cooking I will show y'all how to make the crust and this is what's going to blow your mind and you're going to wish you were friends with my cousin Ann because she had all these secrets all right so let's let that cook down a little bit and in fact we're going to add a little bit of seasoning to it and so what seasoning are we going to add we're going to add some Goya adobo seasoning which is an all-purpose seasoning if you've never tried it, try it one time and you will find yourself eating this on everything because legit adobo goes with everything. Let's make sure you can see that here on the screen. And you could also use uh, rosemary would be good in this. You could put thyme in this. Um, actually sage might be good in this. You could put a lot of different things in here. Some Italian seasoning or just some flavored salt, just a little bit of garlic. If you wanted to add a little garlic, that would be good. Okay, now if you're wondering why the lighting is different, I turned off the Satan light because I frankly I couldn't take it anymore that Satan was trying to be in my kitchen because we can't have that. But we can have an amazing crust for this garden pie. So if you subscribe to my channel, I'm giving you a second to do that and click like and leave me a happy comment. You can go backwards and find my recipe video for the best and easiest homemade pie crust ever. 
So you can make that if you want to. And that's why we made the recipe for you friends. And you can make that in advance and it can be living in your freezer. However, for those of y'all that didn't make one, don't have the time or the inclination, but you like crescent rolls? <laughs> we all love crescent rolls. Now these are Publix brand that I'm using today. And you know why, right? Because they were on sale. That's right, you people have learned some things watching Lee Brown's cooking channel here. So what you're gonna do is get your deep pie, pie dish, your deep dish, deep, dish, pie crust, pie dish. Look, I can't even talk today. And we're gonna open up our can of crescent rolls. Look, y'all, this is gonna blow your mind. So, right, don't you wish Anne was your friend? So she can be your friend by default, but she's my family. Okay, so it makes these little triangles when you get it out of the can. And we're just gonna lay the, pie, the triangles in our pie plate like so. Just kind of lay it in here. And we'll start to match up these triangles and mush them in, close up the gaps. You definitely want to close in the gaps between the crescent rolls. Okay, now when you take your crescent rolls out of the can, if they don't come out perfectly, because it's dough, just reshape it and mush it and we're going to make it fit into the pie plate because that's the beauty of my kitchen, my rules. We will make it work and i probably should have made that my tagline y'all make it work although i think that's what tim gunn said on project runway and now they got that new fashion show which he looks like he has the parkinson's or something i don't know all right that looks like half the pie plate let's hope that works oh you know what i forgot to do lol i forgot to cut my oven on to three 75. So we're going to cut our oven on the 375. Okay, second half of the can here. Let's get these triangles opened up. This particular can is difficult. There we go. There come our triangles. And you're really just going to place them in the plate until you close up the gaps and Turn it into a pie crust. See, you can turn crescent rolls into a savory pie crust. And I would presume this would work with a regular pie too. Never have tried it because I do like my homemade. But for garden pie, the whole point of summertime food is that it'd be relatively easy, pretty fast, and good enough for the whole family to eat and not complain about. And extra bonus credits when it uses up all the things that come out of your amazing home garden. Now this one just didn't come out of the can correctly, but that's all right. It has covered up the real estate in our pie plate here. And this is actually not, you know, location, location, location real estate. This is, give me enough space for my footprint. All right, we just about got it covered here. Oh. All right, now after you have laid all of those crescent rolls out and just kind of, you know, mush them around to make a crust, your crust is ready. So now let's get that filling and see how it's doing. And it is perfection, of course. So now it's time for assembly of your pie. And assembly is super easy. So we're just gonna dump all of the cooked goodness here, the ground beef, onions, green peppers, and squash into our pie plate. And by the way, the reason I did not drain my ground beef, I was using 90% beef, 90% lean, and the grease cooked itself right up out of here. And in fact, that squash appears to probably have absorbed a little bit, so we didn't have any drippings, so yay. But if you are using a ground beef that is a 70% lean or even an 80, you probably need to drain your grease off before you throw your veggies in there. So just FYI on that. Now, <clears throat> next thing we're gonna do, set that to the side for a quick second, because you can't have a garden pie without tomatoes. 
Now you can use any kind of tomato you want. These are the ones that came out of my garden. I don't have the foggiest idea which kind it is because I thought I was buying better boys. But then these came out and they're the tastiest things I've ever had. They're stripey. I think they've got to be kin to my Cherokee purples and they are easily the best tasting tomatoes I've ever had in my life. But they're perfect for cooking. So anyway, we're just cut it in thin slices. We're just gonna lay it across the top of our pie here. So cut however many more slices you need. I've got four tomatoes here. And I think that's probably the right number. Now if you're using a better boy or a mortgage lifter, some big old Cherokees, you might just need one big old slicer. And I guess you could probably put cherry tomatoes on top too. I imagine that would be good too. You could take some artistic license here, friends, because it's your kitchen, your rules when you start making Lee's recipes at your house. And you can just use whatever you have around. In fact, I did use a squash today, but at the beginning of my garden pies this summer, we started with zucchini and moved over into squash as that's what we had available. And I would imagine that if you didn't have an onion, you could use dried onions. And if you didn't have a green pepper, you could use yellow peppers or orange ones, red ones, whatever you want to use. And that's the beauty of some of these home recipes, y'all. You can get creative and let those creative juices flow. Uh, uh, uh. You like that? You like that joke? I know you did, friends. All right, so I think I've got all my slicers in here. Now, the last thing we're gonna do, because we know that you have concerns about bone density, right? And so this is what you're looking like so far. Now we're gonna add what's gonna save you from osteoporosis one day cheese. Now again, if I were having more time, I would get a block and grate it myself, but because this was BOGO, I bought some cheddar cheese at the store. I'm using a cheddar jack blend today. You could use a cheddar blend or the Mexican blend or the Italian blend if you like those different flavors a little bit better. And we're just gonna sprinkle a little layer on the top where you can reduce or add as you see fit. You know, if you need more bone density help, you know, you should put more cheese on. That's totally why you do it. And if you are lactose intolerant, then I guess you buy that lactose intolerant weird cheese, but you know, you do you. And I think that's what we got here. So now, that's it, see? We're gonna put this in the oven at 375 for um, about 15 minutes. We can maybe go 20, but I'm gonna do 15. Essentially, you'll go until you've got the edges of your crust are golden and the cheese is melted and you're good. So we'll see you on the other side of 375. And just like that, oh, by the way, if y'all are wondering what the dog is, that's my friend Sally's dog, Jolene, who brings joy everywhere she goes. So that's our new dish towel for those of y'all that like to observe the set of my kitchen, my rules. And so, cause I was running my mouth, the edges got a little bit crispy, but I like them like that. And so there you go. That was actually 12 minutes to an amazing supper. One pie pan balanced meal uses what's in your garden and fresh and you will love it. I can't wait to hear how yours goes. Leave me a comment, send me a picture of yours, and I'll see you next time on My Kitchen, My Rules.